your name for you alone is worthy to be praised you alone is worthy to be adored there is no god like you you are the lord you change lord but you cannot change for any reason you remain the same god the same yesterday today and forever we honor your name and we adore you we have come again to learn at your feet, our Lord, Savior, Jesus Christ. We ask that you teach us again your word. Reveal new things in your word to us. That which we have not known, that which we have not seen. Father, reveal them to us and teach us by yourself. By the ministry of the Holy Ghost tonight, teach us your word. Your word that gives life everlasting. Lord, by your illuminating world tonight, may you illuminate any area of darkness in anyone's life that is under the sound of my voice. In the name of Jesus Christ, let your world again have precaution in our life. Let your world, glorious God, be glorified among all. In the name of Jesus Christ, any power, any man that wants to stand as elements against the word of God tonight. My Father, my God, arise and remove them of the way in the name of Jesus. For whosoever fall on the stone shall be granted to pieces. Whosoever the stone fall upon shall be granted to powder. Any man, any woman, I want to stand against your word of salvation, Lord. May you grant them to pieces in the name of Jesus Christ. Let your word, Father, tonight bring forth salvation let the world bring forth transformation let the world bring forth change for in jesus glorious name we pray amen jesus mighty name we receive amen good evening my beloved brothers and sisters so far and near both home and abroad i bring greetings to you all in the name of our lord jesus christ Amen. Good evening, sir. Trust the Lord tonight. Everyone is doing great. Everyone is doing well. And the Lord God have a word for us again tonight. Praise the living God. Quickly, we talk about the of our time. We'll be looking into the word of God. And our topic tonight that we'll be looking into is God cannot change his judgment for any reason. God cannot change his judgment for any reason. God cannot because of you, neither because of me. God cannot because of your position. God cannot because of your fame, cannot because of your words, change his judgment. Praise the living God. No man, no one, no human, no spirit can bribe God to change his verdicts because his word is yea and amen. Is a sure word. God honor his word more than his name. So don't think you can bribe God to enter heaven. You cannot bribe God. You can you may bribe your pastor, you may bribe your wife, bribe your husband, you may bribe your boss in the office, you may bribe your president. You may bribe your governor, your senator. You may bribe your teacher. 
but you cannot bribe God. There is no one that can bribe God to change in his judgment. Amen. Amen. The activity in the church cannot bribe God or cannot make God change his judgment when it comes to life everlasting in heaven or in hell. When it comes to eternity in heaven and hellfire, our activity cannot change God from his judgment. Amen. Amen. Remember Malachi 3 verse 6 says, I am the law. I change not. So it is because of him that we are not consumed. So God cannot change. There is nothing that will make God to change his judgments. The judgment of God is already seen. Jesus has already seen, signed the judgment by his blood to the power of the Holy Ghost. So there is nothing that can change it again. And there is nothing that can make God to change the verdict about eternity in hell or in heaven. Let's quickly look at the book of Romans chapter two. Romans chapter two, from verse 11 to 16. Now yeah, with your Bible, turn with me to the book of Romans. Romans chapter 2, verse number 11 to 16. Praise the living God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I read in Jesus' name. Amen. Romans chapter 2, verse 11 to what, sir? To 16. To 16. To 16. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. For there is no respect of person with God. Verse 12. For as many have sinned without law shall also perish without law. And as many have as have sinned in the law shall be judged by the law. 13. For not the hearer of the law are just before God but the doer of the law shall be justified. For when the Gentiles, which have not the law, do by nature things, do by nature the things contained in the law, these having not the law are a law unto themselves. 15. Which show the work of the law written in their hearts, their conscience, also bearing witness and their thoughts, the mean why accusing or as excusing one another. 16, in the day when God shall judge the secret of men by Jesus Christ, according to the gospel. Amen. Thank Amen. You. So the Lord God cannot change his judgments because of your activity. He cannot change his judgment because of your position. Whether you are a pastor, be you a pastor, be you an apostle, be you an evangelist, be you a teacher, be you a prophet, or be you just a member in the church that is not doing anything. Your position cannot make God to change his judgment. Everyone will be judged according to our work. Your works is what will determine if you will be rapturable. Your works is what will determine if you will assess heaven or you go to hell. So begin to ask yourself, what are my works? Are they qualified? Because every man's work will be reviewed through the fire. First Corinthians 3, it said, if your work survive the fire, then you glorify God. What are your works? 
What are your doings? What you do in the secret? What you do in the open? That day, all will be revealed because the Lord God will judge the works of men, both the secret, whether good or bad. So do not be deceived that you are contributing to the growth to build the church or you are paying school fees for some people, some individual, but your works in the secret is against the will of God. Your good will to people cannot change the judgment of God. So what will save you, what will save me, what will save us is our work of righteousness and holiness, both in the secret and in the open. Are you holy when you are in the church, when in the public alone? But when you left the public in your secret place, you become unholy? Are you like Camelo that have different color? When you are before anything that counts, you change switch to that. When in the public, you pretend to be good, but in the secret, in the private, you are someone else, or somebody else rather. So God cannot change his judgment because you are handsome, because you are beautiful, because you look good or you look nice, because you know how to speak grammar, you speak so eloquent. God cannot change his verdicts because you are intelligent. No. A judgment of God stands sure. Nothing can change it. And God cannot, because of any reason, for any reason, change his judgment. If you do what is good, you live righteous and holy before God. While you are See, on this earth, then congratulations to you. If you decide to condemn your body, your soul, and spirit, also congratulations to help fire. So the choice is yours. That is why God gave every man, God gave human being, permissive we. It will permit you to do what you wish to do. God allow us to make our choices, but he advised us to make the right choice. God left us with decision to make by ourselves, but he advises us that let our decision be of good, not of evil. So don't think pretending to be good in public will save your soul. Rather, it will increase many sorrow and lead to destruction. Do you know why? If you pretend to be okay when you are sick, nobody will pity you or will try to help you out. But when you come as who you are, that is when you get help. So that is why that word, come to Jesus as you are. But you don't need to remain the same way you came. You came as a sinner to Jesus. Why should you remain in your sin? When you are dirty, then you go to clean water. Jesus is the clean water. The word of God is the clean water. Jesus said you are clean by the word that has been spoken. The word he has spoken to us, we have been made clean. Now, if you are dirty, you go to clean water. In your return from that clean water, you're supposed to look clean. If you still remain dirty after using clean water, something is wrong. Either you did not use the clean water well, or after using the clean water, you return back to your mood. Praise the living God. Hallelujah. Let's also look at the book of Detroit, your enemy, Deuteronomy. 10, verse 17 and 18. It's not a partial God. He does not do juro. There is no juro in his judgment. 
is not a man to lie. Neither the son of man for him to repent. What he says, I read it. Amen. Go on. Betray your enemy, chapter 10, <laughs> verse 16 to 17. Circumcise, therefore, the first Seven. skin of your heart. 16 to 18. Uh, read it to 18. Man. Okay. 16 to 18. <laughs> I read again. Circumcise, therefore, the foreskin of your heart, and be no more sniff, sniff, neck, naked. Seventeen. For the Lord your God is God of gods, and the Lord of lords, a great God, a mighty, and a terrible which regarded not person, not taking reward. It's in the last Go verse. Away. He doeth as he executes the judgment of the fatherless and widow. Mommy, what? <laughs> and loveth the stranger in giving him food and raiment. Amen. Amen. Mommy, why are you this is admonition. You throw away your worldly dress. What about your worldly heart? Have you circumcised the first king of your heart? You appear good. You appear holy at holy. What about your inside? Is it full of dead men's bone? So he's telling you and I that we should circumcise our heart. As Joel, who verse 11 talks about that you should rend your hearts, not your garments. You put on a bada, you clothe yourself, you cover up like the other religion do. The Pharisees, the Sadducees. But your heart is not transformed, it's not circumcised. When the judgment of God will be released, it will not show you partiality. God has no regard for anyone when it comes to judgment. Oh, you are really good in supplying people food. For that is you enter my rest. Mm. You preach, you win souls for my kingdom, but you were living in sin. Because you win soul, enter my rest. No, God does not regard anyone. Because you are the upper of that kingdom. You are the president of that nation. You were prime minister when you were on earth. For your position, you occupied on earth. For that reason, enter my rest. No. God does not regard anyone. He does not show partiality. He administers, he executes judgment for the fatherless, for the widow, for strangers. In case you do oppress the fatherless. You oppress strangers, then your destination is hell unless you repent now. It is unfortunate today, a lot of pastors run after wet, worldly wet, fame, power, and position just to use it to oppress other people. What an error. It will have been better such person were never born or rather, commit suicide. When you oppress the fatherless, you oppress the widow, the strangers, or you oppress the needy, the poor, with your words, with your position, whatever, heaven is not for you. So God cannot change his verdict, his judgment for any reason. It cannot signify it for any man. So the word of God is sure and amen. If you like, remove some pages of the scripture and pick the one that concerns you and throw away the one you say it doesn't concern you. Now, Old Testament. So we are in the new era. I have nothing to do with Old Testament. There are some churches, they don't preach Old Testament. They don't read from Old Testament. They will tell you 
Old Testament is for the old and it's past. New Testament is their era. What an ignorance. I pray the Lord will help us. Ignorance will not destroy us in the name of Jesus Christ. So God does not show partiality. He does not guide anyone. And he will not change his judgment for any reason. In case maybe you are having that feeling that after controlling crowd and you are living in sin, you know your secret sin, your secret work, after controlling crowd to hell, then God will tell you, welcome home. Come and enter my rest. There is nothing like that. And I pray that the Lord God Almighty will help us to escape that judgment of hell, the anger of God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's look at the book of Second Chronicle, chapter 19. Second Chronicle 19. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Second Chronicle 19, verse 7. Look at the instruction Moses passed to some of the elders. Second Chronicle 19, verse 7 says, Now therefore, let the fear of the Lord be upon you. Take care and do it. For there is no iniquity with the Lord our God, no partiality, no taking of bribe. So you when they show partiality and you they take bribe and you are a believer in Christ Jesus, but yet you take you do partiality, you take bribe. Heaven is not for you unless you repent. Now, my brother, now be this, now my sister, and your brother, your sister, you know very well it's not qualified. Because your brother, your sister, What we have as a believers in Christ, those of the same household of faith are your brothers and your sister. If your focus is on biological brother and sister who have not only repented, you have already missed it. Jesus Christ. Our Savior, he have laid down the example when his earthly mother, brothers came, the disciples said to him, your brothers, your sister, they are your mother, standing by the door, they want to see you. He looked at them all and said, my brother, my mother. He said, you see these people that are sitting here listening to the word of God doing the will of my father. He said, they are my brother. They are my sister. But today, believers in Christ, you have, you have come to Christ. It's a new family that you have come into. The family of Christ. But your own. And that your bro biological brother, family brother, we don't know Jesus, we don't know God. That will be your first ultimate person when you put in line in your life. This earth will wipe away with all the evils 
and those who are disobedient to God's word. They will all wipe away, perish away with this earth. So God cannot change for any reason. That is why he does not show partiality. You know they do Ojoro? He does not take bribe. A lot of lawyers, they're not going to make heaven unless they repent. Lawyer will be defending the case of someone they know very well is guilty. You will stand as defending the case against the innocent. Judge taking bribe to prevent judgment, to prevent justice. You cannot enter heaven unless you repent. No heaven for you. If you are a magistrate on this earth and you pervert justice, because God is a God of justice and equity, does not show partiality, but you take bribe because of position of fame, you oppress the poor. Then get ready for her fire because that is where you belong. Unless you repent. I pray God will help us to amend our ways in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Colossians 3 verse 25. The book of Colossians chapter 3 verse 25. Let's see what the word of God says. Colossians 3, 25. But he who does wrong will be repaid for what he has done. And there is no partiality. He who does wrong will be repaid for what he has done. There is no partiality. It is good we discipline ourselves now so that we escape the danger of hell than to pamper ourselves and end in hell. That is why Proverbs 3, Proverbs 11 and 12 says, whom the Lord love, he disciplined. As a father disciplined the son that he loved. And in Hebrews 12, from verse 8, he said, Our earthly father disciplined us to the best they know. But the discipline of the Lord is more profitable. If you are without discipline, said you are illegitimate. So we, we break that word illegitimate to another, another grammar, bastard. So every true believer that must enter heaven, the place of rest, must undergo discipline. Because the flesh, we want to drag the spirit to do against the will of God. That is why we must discipline ourselves. We must discipline the fresh. Otherwise, the fresh, this fresh, this terrestrial body will not go to heaven. It will return back to the dust. And the terrestrial body worrying day and night to drag the soul of man to her fire. Mm. So the choice is yours to me. Not today that God cannot change his judgment, his verdict for any reason. In case maybe you are having that intuition in your mind, that thought, that feeling. Oh, after doing the work of God, even if I live in sin, even if I die in sin, at least the work I do for God, God will, because of that one, show me mercy. When it comes to judgment, there is no mercy, no. Now this earth, night judgment, night mercy day. Anything will make you don't die. 
No mercy again. Anybody that die in sin, you write ROIP, rest in peace. There is no rest in peace for sinner that is dead. Any soul that die in sin has no rest in peace. If you like, continue to weep and write, rest in peace, rest in peace. Pray for one year, two years. There is no rest in peace for anyone who dies in sin. If you like, hired all the most anointed prophets in the world to pray for a sinner that dies in sin. That's so. In you know, order to hear that prayer point again, the only thing when that's what they hear is the judgment of God way to hell fire. When the person they are alive, you not go hire anointed pastors or anointed prophets or whatever highest prophets to pray for the person to change from evil way, from sinful way, to follow the way of righteousness and holiness. Now that the person have died. You can't go carry highest prophet with highest anointing. If there's anything like that, they'll be praying for a dead body that the soul may rest in peace. No rest in peace for sinner that die in sin. What is remaining is the judgment of God. Pray the Lord will help us. We will not die in sin. Satan will not have anything to accuse our soul with. Because he's the accuser of the brethren. Always monitoring day and night to see who will fall out. That is why he ran to and flew the earth. Seeking who we slack for he to devour. Job 34, verse 19 to 27. The book of Job 34, verse 19 to 27. Yes, he is not partial to princes. God will not show partiality because of your royalty. You came out from a wedding home, a rich family. You'll be a Jebel. God will not use that to show you partiality, to change his judgment. Nor does he regard the rich more than the poor. Mm. Jesus said, it is hard. It is more easier for a rich, for a for a camel to pass through the eyes of an Hindu than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. In other words, it is hard for a rich man who loves his riches to enter the kingdom of God. It is hard. Because he will find it difficult to do away with those riches. He will begin to serve that mammon. God is not God of mammon. Begin to serve the printed currency men, printed with their hands. It will make that riches his God, worshiping the wet of this earth. But God does not regard whether you are rich or poor. If you die in sin as a poor man, you go to hell fire. So if you also die in sin as a rich man, you go to hell fire. Some time ago, I believe one of our sisters asked a question. Now, Jesus said, it is easier for the camel to pass through the eyes of a needle than for a rich person to enter to the kingdom of heaven. Does it mean the rich will not enter heaven? Yes. The rich that is rich to us God will enter heaven. But if you are rich in this earth and you are not rich to us God, no heaven for you. So if you are poor in this earth and you are not rich to us God, no heaven as well. Jesus will not be oh, you suffer a lot on earth. You are not privileged to enjoy the weight of the earth. And you don't see, come and enter heaven. No. 
Don't use the case of Lazarus, the parable that Jesus gave. Lazarus and the rich man. Don't use that case of Lazarus. And say, ah, you are poor. You don't need repentance because you are poor. You will enter heaven. No. You cannot enter heaven because you are poor on earth. If you are poor and you are not rich towards God, no heaven. But if you are poor and you are rich towards God, heaven is your destination. Congratulations. Don't say, ah, only poor people, as the scriptures say, that the poor are rich towards God. The poor are rich towards God means poor people, most of the poor, majority, are humble. They have that humility because challenges can't humble them. Poverty can make them humble way than to be proud like the rich. To see a humble person that is rich is not to 1% on, in this earth. Rich man on earth is not to 1% that have the spirit of humility. That arrogant spirit that follow wet. If the person is not careful, we begin to control such person. So if you are poor on earth, and you die in your sin, you cannot enter heaven because you were poor. If you are rich on earth and you die in sin, you cannot also enter heaven because you were rich on earth. So it has nothing to change the mandate of heaven and of hellfire. The disobedient, it didn't say the poor, the rich, no, the disobedient. Whether you are poor, whether you are rich, whether you are blind or you are sighted, if you die in sin, you are a disobedient child, your destination is hell. So it is better today that you make a good decision so that you escape the danger of hell. So God does not regard the princes. He does not regard the rich more than the poor, for they are all the work of his hand. Job 34, verse 20. In a moment, they die in the middle of the night. The people are shaking and pass away. The mighty are taken away without a hand. For his eyes are on the ways of man and he sees all his steps. The eyes of the Lord are in the ways of man. He sees all his steps. There is no darkness, no shadow of death where the workers of iniquity may hide their themselves. If you are workers of iniquity, there is no place you can hide yourself in Christ unless genuinely you repent. But there is no darkness in Christ. There is no shadow of death where you can hide yourself. So on that day, I will hide here so that I will escape the danger of hell. It is your repentance. Genuine repentance. Do away with worldliness. Do away with worldly things. Those things that you know that God hates, hates them. That is the only way you can escape it. You cannot love what God hates and enter his rest. It's not possible. And you cannot hate what God loves and enter his rest. You have to love what God loves I hate what God hates. That is the principle of God. Love what he loves. Hate what he hates. The only way out to escape the danger of hell. No matter the wet you have, you will still die. So why will you allow your wet to drag your soul to hell? No matter the property you accumulate on earth, the more you have property, the more you are creating problems for yourself. The more your property, the more your narrow way, you are out of it because your, way, your property will push you out of the narrow way and push you to the broad way. And any man that enters the broad way and die in the broad way will go to hell. Only those who are in the narrow way and die in the narrow way will assess heaven.
There is no darkness in Christ, no shadow of death, where the workers of iniquity can hide themselves. No doubt. You are in church, yet you are committing sin. You think you are saved. You are not in Christ. He said, the child of God does not live in sin. If you are living in sin, you are not in Christ yet. You heard about Jesus. You draw closer, but you have not surrendered to him. You are like Zacchaeus, the shortest man who the Bible described. Because of his height, deny him of seeing Christ. He did not allow that height to be a barrier. He climbed the tree to see Jesus. When he saw Jesus, Jesus, because of how serious the short man was, he did not allow his height to deny him, to deprive him of seeing Jesus. And Jesus said, okay, for this purpose, I will come to your house. This is how we accept Jesus into our life. Now your work of righteousness and holiness it's what made Christ to remain, abide, and dine with you forever. What did he do? He followed Zacchaeus to his house. Today, salvation has come to your household. That was when Zacchaeus surrendered totally to Jesus. The fact that you draw near to church does not mean you have surrendered totally, that you are already saved. You might be in a church that is preaching holiness, yet you still go to hell. Why? Because you are not obeying the genuine word of God. Even in the midst of holy, of the holy, Satan still appear. God need not further consider, to consider a man that he should go before God in judgment, break in pieces mighty men without, it, without inquiring, and set others in their place. Therefore, he knows their works. He overthrew them in the night, and they are crushed. He strike them as wicked men in the open sight of others. Because they turned back from him and would not consider any of his ways, so that they caused the cry of the poor to come to him. If you are not considering the ways of God, God cannot change his judgment. Obeying God's word is for our own profiting. He has nothing to do to add to God. It's already I am. Whether you choose to obey, God remains I am. You choose not to obey, it remains I am. It's just like the government of the country you are gave law. You obey the law is for your good. You refuse to obey is for your punishment. If you not add to the government, then that will really remove from the government. That is how the law of God is. When you obey it, it is for your own good. It will not add to Jesus. You refuse to obey, it's for your own destruction. It will not remove from Jesus. That is why souls are born daily and souls die daily. Souls are reserved for heaven daily. Why souls are also reserved for hell daily? So you have to make your choice today where your soul will be reserved for. I pray that the Lord God will help us. We will not miss heaven in the name of Jesus Christ. We will not miss heaven in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Psalm 62, verse 12. The book of Psalms, chapter 62, verse 12. Also to you, O Lord, belongs mercy. For you render to each one according to his word. God 
os mercies. And is still rendered to everyone according to our works. He owns mercy. When you are alive, you ask for mercy, he will show you mercy. When you come to him, you ask for mercy, we show you mercy. And when you die in your sin, it will render to you according to your work. It will judge you according to what you, you do before you die. That is why it is called I am. God is not much interested in your past. He said that I will go and search your past, your history, to use it against you. But God is interested in your presence. How do you live your life before you die? That is the account that will be read. You were once a worse sinner, but you repented before you die. Congratulations. But don't you wait to say, ah, tomorrow, next tomorrow is when I will die. So I have to commit sin to today over before I repent because you don't know your date of death. That is why you have to repent early, today, now. When you die in your sin, have fire street. When you die in righteousness, heaven becomes your portion. I want to end my message with Romans chapter 2, where we read from before. Romans 2. The book of Romans chapter 2 from verse 1 to 10. Romans chapter 2 from verse 1 to 10. Therefore, you are inexcusable. You don't have excuse to give. Now, this is the reason why you did not live a holy and a righteous life. Like those of you who like saying God understands. Yes, God understands where you will end your soul if you refuse to repent. God understands where you will spend your eternity. When you died in your sin. Because you are without excuse. Oh man. Whoever you are. Who judge. For in whatever you judge another. You condemn yourself. For you who judge. Practice the same thing. This one and are mostly for the preacher. If I'm quick to judge you because say, now you be the thief when they catch. They know you are the thief. They never catch me. Now I will never come out. They as they catch you, now come to throw you stone. No see him, but my old day there. He said, and the same thing though. As you do the same thing, you are condemned to it. You preach. What you preach against, you do them. Ah, you are condemned. You shall sinners repent, repent, repent. But you that is shouting, after shouting, you go back to commit your own secret sin. You are condemned as well. Repent. Jesus, they show me heaven. Jesus, they show me heaven. Repent. If you see what is Jesus, they show me. Repent, repent. After shouting, you condemn other people's name. You destroy other people's image. You lie against other people. Which ever you are, Eta. Repent, repent. After preaching, you try to destroy other people's work. Which ever you are, Eta. Trying to destroy other people's image. Which heaven you want to enter? I bet those ones not be seen. You think only sins of fornication, adultery, fraud, armed robbery, stealing, or worldly appearance, dress naked, fornication. You think that is the only sin that can lead a man to hell? When you speak evil against another, you bear false witness. You lie. 
try to destroy another person's image, try to destroy another person's good work, you cannot escape the danger of hell. So don't do what you preach against and you not go behind and be doing them. What you preach, practice it so that you will not be condemned. But we know that the judgment of God is according to truth against those who practice such things. And do you think this, oh man, you who judge those practicing such things and doing the same in secret, those are when they do their own plea, you they judge them. But you too, they practice your own secret. Do you think you are free? Do you think you will escape the judgment of God? Do you think God will not change his verdict because you, you shout openly, you condemn those things openly, but in secret, you went back and be doing those things you condemn. Apostle Paul said, if I rebuild that which he have destroyed, the worldly life, when you don't throw away, you come publicly, say you throw them away, but in secret, you still deliver. But condemning your own soul. You have made that grace of Christ in your life in vain. Or do you despise the riches of his goodness, forbearance, and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leads you to repentance, but in accordance with your hardiness and your impertinence? Your impenitent heart, you are treasuring up for yourself, wrought in the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God. His judgment is so righteous, unbendable, unchangeable. Who will render to each one according to his deed? Not because you preach. That will make you enter heaven. No. Preaching is not all, but doing what you preach. Okay. Fulfilling the we, that is what will make a way for us to enter. God will render to each one according to our deed. Eternal life. To those, Romans 2 verse 7, eternal life to those who by patience continuous in doing good, even if that they mock you, that they laugh you, that they talk about you, of bad evil, continue to do that good in patience. Don't give up. Even if all the whole work gathered against you for your well doing for your good deed. Continue, don't give up. Even if the church you are hates you for your good, continue doing good. Don't give up. Even if men Continue your good works. Do not give up. Keep doing good. Don't stop doing good. Keep doing your best. Do not stop. Keep doing good. Do not stop. Keep doing good. Do not give up. Keep doing good. Do not relax.
because Jesus is coming soon. Do not give up in your well doing. Continue doing good. Keep pressing on. Keep going on. Keep moving. If they backbite you, move forward. They gossip you, move forward. Keep pressing. Don't pay attention to whatever anyone may say or say about you. A time to those who by patient continues in doing good, seek for glory, honor, and immortality. But you will refuse to repair. When the square people need for back, they run your leg, it is, it is, it is, it is fast, it is sweet you. Your tongue, they sweet you to carry for you, they lie up and down, lying on other people's head. At their back, you are, you are doing evil. When you come to the front, you pretend to be good. This scripture, verse 8, Romans 2, it says to you, but to those who are self-seeking and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation and wrath, tribulation and anguish, and every soul of man who does evil, of the Jews first, and also of the Greeks, for glory, honor, peace to everyone, who was what is good to the Jews first and also to the Greek. So the choice is yours to make. The rest of my case here. May the Lord bless and increase his word in our hearts in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ.